KCHS, I'm Natalie. And I'm Brooke. And I'm Ian. And welcome to another episode of The Squawk. Ta-ka! Normally at this time of The Squawk, we tell you what our stories are going to be today. But today is Mystery Squawk Day. And we're too lazy to shoot that cutscene. Let's get started. We are very happy to announce that Clover High School's very own Miss Wilson was chosen as the Family and Consumer Science Teacher of the Year. I'm very proud. Um, I think there are a lot of um, talented Family and Consumer Science teachers in South Carolina, um, so I feel very honored. Miss Wilson loves teaching her students skills that they will use every day in their lives. I think that I am the luckiest teacher here at Clover High School because I teach um, family consumer sciences. It is a subject that really impacts our students. Um, it's very rewarding when I have a student who has um, graduated, they have their own family, they have their own children, and they come back and share some of the things that they learned in the class. Students love Miss Wilson because of her hands-on style of teaching and her positive attitude. Well, me personally, I like the fact that the whole class, like, it teaches you life skills that you're just going to use no matter what your career is. And I like her as a teacher because she always has interesting activities to do and she's really good at explaining things. She treats you on a um, respect level that you would, it, like, you, she treats you like an adult, like you should be respected and um, she doesn't talk down to you like a child. Miss Wilson hopes her students can carry the skills that they learn to help them in their successful futures. I hope that um, they can use the skills that they learn in Family Consumer Sciences to balance um, their life, to balance uh, work, the careers, um, family, children. Um, I hope that they use the information for um, nutrition, for um, uh, handling families in crisis, all the information I hope they are able to use. Congratulations, Miss Wilson, and thank you for all of your hard work and dedication. Who says robots can't love? <laughs> and now for technology in the classroom. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> Clover has been integrating a plethora of new technology in the past few years, one of which being the iPads that many teachers find very resourceful in the classroom. I use them with our math class, um, my discrete math class, so we do things such as look up interest rates on houses and cars. We use them for pretty regularly in class, especially with the stock market. They can look up other different apps to, to check what different stocks are. Teachers like to use the iPads because it makes learning more of a fun and comfortable environment for the students. The best way to teach now is not just the traditional methods. It's to get in there and use other technologies. I don't, they're appealing to students because there's something new. Some, some students have them, but a lot of students don't, and they haven't used them before. So it's an opportunity for them to be exposed to new technology, too, and to just learn how to use the iPad. It helps me give the kids one more supplement, um, so I'm not just standing at the board talking and talking and talking, so they can actually have it in their hands and actually work. You know, we've used them for creating things as well, and I think that's kind of a misconception with the iPads, is that they're just good for consuming content, but there are a lot of good apps out there where you can actually create things. New technology has been receiving a lot of positive feedback from students as well. I can't remember using any technology in the classroom when I was younger, so it's definitely improved with the iPads and the high-tech computers we use now. I definitely like it better than having a book in front of me. Um, you know, books are kind of out of date now. So with the modern technologies, definitely speeding up the learning process. Teachers are excited about the growth of technology and can't wait to see what lies ahead. It changes every single year and we get new, and every single day, I mean, all the apps that are coming out for the iDevices, it's exciting, but it's hard to keep up. That's the way of the future. I mean, the chalkboard is long gone. Um, or iPads and laptops and Wi-Fi and all that good stuff now. I remember being in elementary school and having chalkboards, and then we went to whiteboards and then Promethean boards. So it's huge, so I'm excited to see what happens in the next 10 years. Right. 
hurts my brain. Technology. Now let's go look at something else. Last week, Clover High School was fortunate to have a guest speaker come and talk about the consequences of chewing tobacco and dip. Let's go have a quick look. Hi, you guys. I'm here with our guest speaker, Gruen, and he came to give a speech at an assembly today, and now he's here to share his story with the rest of us. So, can you give us a little bit of background on your story? Yeah, my name is Gruen by Marins. Uh, I started using spit tobacco at the age of 13. I was by medicine at 17 with oral cancer. Uh, I've had 34 surgeries, spent millions of dollars in medical bills, and this isn't something that you want to get into. And now, how did you get the cancer, or how did that develop over time? It is, it is very common for people to uh, get a cancer or a reason from tobacco use. Uh, tobacco is very dangerous, and you put your mouth, and it can cause less extensive problems if you continue to use it. And how many, how many surgeries and treatments have you undergone? I've had 34 surgeries, thousands of treatments, and I've uh, spent about $3 million in medical bills. That's a lot of money. Um, how did you deal with all that? How did you handle going through all of that? It was tough. I mean, at 17 years old, you're supposed to be worried about who your problem is. You're supposed to be worried about how to save your life. So it was difficult. Uh, thanks to your family, your friends. Uh, thanks to God, but I, I really got through it. It made me the man I am today. And now you travel across the country doing assemblies and speaking to kids. Why did you get into that? Why did you decide to do that? You know, really the thing that drives me to do this is I want people to have a first shot with their life. I didn't have that. I grew up in a small community. And that was a part of our culture, so I was very naive to what tobacco would do to me. That's why I'm here today. I don't have to do this. I, I, I can be at home with my family. And that I let me do this so that others have a first shot with her life and they can really understand how dangerous tobacco is. And we really appreciate you coming and speaking with us today. Um, I know that, you know, what you said touched a lot of kids' hearts and so we really appreciate that. Is there any last message that you would like to say to the students? I just want you guys to know that if you're using tobacco, this isn't something, that, this isn't a game. If you can hear me use it, this is a hint you take. Yeah, ask yourself if you want to look like me, sound like me, and go through all the things I've been through for a stupid little thing like tobacco. Yeah, I hope not. All right, thank you so much for talking to us. We really appreciate it, and your story is definitely an inspiration to thousands of kids, so we really appreciate you sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll send it over to Ian and Natalie, and we'll see what's going on with Chef Boo. Thank you for your enlightening testimony. It's boo time. That's not supposed to be right. Congratulations to Chef Boo for being chosen as Clover High School's Teacher of the Month for March. Chef Boo loves his job because he gets to have fun working with teenagers every day. When I first started teaching, it, it just seemed like the craziest idea that I would be in a position of authority. Yet I felt like I was really shoulder to shoulder with peers. Uh, it, at 30 years old, I, I still felt like a big kid and still do. And working with teenagers just felt like I was in my element. Chef Boo had never thought about becoming a cook, much less a cooking teacher. But he is glad that he did. I was very much interested in, in writing and poetry, as well as expressing myself artistically and I felt like I had a very strong urge that I wanted to be a part of seeing, being a part of a world where people were no longer hungry, uh, but never had an idea that I wanted to cook. Seeing his students pass the information that he taught them onto their loved ones is one of the many reasons Chef Boo loves teaching. I guess my favorite moment as a teacher is when I feel like that love comes through me and goes to this person and they receive it and they can in turn pass it th along through their food uh, and pass it along to their loved ones. Chef Boo has high hopes for his upcoming years of teaching. My hope now is I, I can manage 25 crazy teenagers at one time. If I can do that, I can do anything. 
Congratulations again, Chef Boo, for becoming March's Teacher of the Month. You certainly deserve it. Thank you, students and staff of CHS, for making me Teacher of the Month. Hey, Ian. Hey. What you doing? I'm doing that Rubik's Cube thing. Oh. You know Clark Chang can do that in like 10 seconds? Oh. Sorry, I'll be there. Just give me a couple of weeks. Okay. You right there, Clark. You made the letter I, but Ian. It's in red. It's my favorite color. Kind of. Sometimes it's blue. I got started by, like, it was three years ago. Uh, I was at my house and my brother was like, oh, I can solve this. I'm like, no, you can't. And he did it in front of me in like a minute. I was like, that's really impressive. So I want to do the same thing because looking up to your older brother, that's what people, younger brothers do. Um, I, uh, it was last year during the whole college get together thing in the, the gym. I saw Clark Chang doing it and I just thought I had to do it. It was just way cool. I started cubing because Jackson and Taylor uh, were buddies, so we hang out all the time. He introduced me to it. Sophomore year, there was a guy who sat in the back of the class that I thought it was really, I saw him just mess around with it, and I was like, that's a pointless skill that I kind of want to have. So I kind of just, he, I asked him to teach me how to do it, and he did. It was pretty easy, and after you know the algorithms, I mean, it's not that hard. It was, it was probably a good month or two, yeah. When I actually sat down and actually tried, it was like two weeks. There are many different ways to solve a Ruby's Cube, and the, the, the different algorithms, you know, that makes it faster to solve them. I use the Friedrich method to solve the cube. Uh, first you find a cross on the bottom, and you put the edge pieces in, and you get one solid color. And then you solve the second layer, and then you solve the top of it, and you solve the last layer. Well, how to solve it, people usually get the cross. Like, people always say, I can get the cross. I'm like, oh, cool. And then you get these um, little edges and corners together, pair them in, and then you finish the last layer. So you basically do two layers at once, and then you solve the last layer. My personal best is 32 seconds. My fastest is a 23. Fastest time, I think, when I would time myself was maybe 54 seconds. I don't do it too quickly. I'm around 16 to 15 seconds on a good day, which is not today, but <laughs> uh, on a bad day, I'm like 19 to 18 seconds or so. <laughs> Technologic, 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 technologic. Buy it, use it, break it, fix it, trash it, change it, no upgrade it, charge it, point it, zoom it, press it, snap it, work it, put it, raise it, write it, get it, paste it, save it, load it, check it, quickly write it, plug it, play it, burn it, flip it, crack it, drop it, zip and zip it, lock it, fill it, pull it, find it, view it, code it, jump and lock it, surf it, scroll it, pose it, click it, cross it, crack it, twitch it, update it, name it, read it. Let it go. You don't think I want to? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Squawk. Sorry. Brought to you by the word testosterone. Anyways, now we're going to go watch the Harlem Shake video by the soccer girls. Terrorista.
Harlem shit. <laughs>